Thursday, October 31st. The city streets are crowded for the holiday, even with the rain. Hidden in the chaos, waiting to strike like snakes. But I'm there too, watching. They think I'm hiding in the shadows, but I am the shadows. The Batman is my favorite film portraying the Caped Crusader. Robert Pattinson is my Batman, at least in the live action form. Batman will forever be Kevin Conroy, who has been voicing the character since 1995. I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman. But Matt Reeves' The Batman has created a new adaptation of the character so unique and stylized that it shines through the rest of mediocrity that superhero films have been for a hot minute. Jane? We simply have too many superhero related projects than we know what to do with. So many get thrown away and some have almost no substance, but only a deadline. Full of blue screen backgrounds, lifeless and the lack of passion seems to be lost for some. The Batman changed all of that for 2022. The Batman is one of the most brilliant, thought-provoking, on-the-edge-of-my-seat mystery and noir films tackling the coping mechanism and social experiment of Bruce Wayne, and the revenge tragedy of Gotham with the Riddler case. The film is beautifully shot by Greg Frazier, who is the cinematographer behind projects like Dune 2021, Rogue One, and The Mandalorian. He brings the film to an entirely new level with his cinematography alone, the wonderful use of LED screens to bring Gotham to life. He paints a gorgeous and dirty canvas with the perspective of Pattinson's Bruce Wayne. It's close and hot, dark and wet. I feel Gotham's cold air in the fall, the eerie breeze over the shoulders of vengeance, and I smell the stink of Gotham's crime-filled dumpster fire after one year and six months into the Batman's career. The story and characters created by Matt Reeves for this adaptation of the world's greatest detective, which is exactly what the film revolves around, the detective side of Batman, but from the perspective of a younger Bruce Wayne. If you would like to see Matt Reeves' inspiration for this Batman, check out the graphic novels Batman Year One, Batman The Long Halloween, and my personal favorite, Batman Ego. These graphic novels will help further explore where Bruce Wayne is, mentally speaking. We see the young and brutal man coping with the death of his parents and using vengeance as a way to have control and bring judge, jury, and executioning to the subjects of his social experiment, the criminals of Gotham. That is Batman's purpose, to never let what happened to him that night after the theater happen to anyone else ever again. Robert Pattinson brings a unique take on Batman, especially in his first two years, skipping to the point deep into his second year, being the already established vigilante in Gotham who has a partnership with Jim Gordon. And might I say, Jeffrey Wright is fantastic as Jim. What does a liar do when he's dead? He lies still. But back to Pattinson, he is the smartest man in the room, Every single scene in which Batman is present, you are going to see more times than not a specific and strategic walk and posture to Batman. Soft but direct footsteps, leaning forward with his ears pointed in a dynamic position and always moving with purpose and control. Even in situations that are tense, like being with the GCPD or the bomb strapped to the DA in the middle of the film. Pattinson acts through the cowl and lets us in on all of his emotions at all times. Like the opening crime scene, where it's him looking into the eyes of the son who had to find his father's murdered body a victim from the Riddler, the exact thing Batman is supposed to prevent. The anger, resentment, empathy, sadness, and frustration. Seeing himself in the boy sitting across from him and immediately jumping back into that night, cold and afraid, powerless and cowardly. All of this is felt and it's subtle, not said, but performed. It is super difficult to act under a cowl, covering most of your expressive features. Pattinson excels at delivering a three-dimensional performance for the three-hour runtime. The characterization of Bruce Wayne is so unique and makes this interpretation of the character so enticing because we are always seeing the story play out from his perspective. So every bit of care and attention in the cinematography or the score from Academy Award-winning composer Michael Giacchino, who has composed scores for films like Ratatouille, The Incredibles, Jojo Rabbit, of course The Batman, and his newest project in directorial debut, the Marvel special presentation Werewolf by Night, which I highly recommend. Giacchino captures the tone of the film and uses his score to enhance the story at play. He brings a very personal and intimate and intimidating chest-bursting sound. 
The new Batman theme is fantastic and immediately iconic. The atmosphere of the film is further developed through the music. I have never listened to a film score more than Michael Giacchino's music for the Batman. The only other contender could be John Williams' Star Wars score. One bit of interesting trivia about the film is Giacchino created the score before the film was ever shot and was used to help guide the actors and crew grow deeper into the roles and vision for the film. Robert Pattinson describes this version of Batman as a tragedy. He approaches the character from such a deep and emotional center, where his performance really transforms into something so beautiful. He has given probably the best performance in a comic book movie since Hugh Jackman or Patrick Stewart in Logan back in 2017. The performance didn't necessarily come easy for Pattinson, he really has to push himself beyond the limits of the restrictive costume and keep the low tone of Batman's voice. He speaks in such a soft volume, but rough infliction from the back of the throat. Oh shit it is, look at that. Don't let me hurt you. You better watch it. You know my reputation? Yeah, I do. Do you? The range of Pattinson in the film is wide and varied depending on which scene we're in. A couple examples of excellent acting choices besides the opening scene described earlier include the funeral scene, in which Bruce Wayne has to act normal, and when Pattinson steps out of his vehicle, he tries to smile for possibly the first time in a long time, and it just doesn't work. He can't. He is stuck as the Batman. At this point in his journey, Bruce Wayne is an afterthought. It is subtle and it is brilliant. The scene after the bomb explodes, he wakes inside GCPD, cornered and surrounded by those who oppose him with the only shimmer of light being Gordon. And at the time, even Gordon betrayed him. The subtle pain and resentment slowly followed, feeling betrayed by the only good cop he knows. You too now. Let me this is obviously not a long betrayal, as it is revealed to be Gordon's plan for him to escape, but it is still worthy of note because of the acting choices made by Pattinson. My final example is the scene where Riddler is captured, and it is just the Batman confronting the man who orchestrated this entire thing. The moment that Edward Nashton said, immediately, Pattinson's entire body and mind shifts, and it feels like Batman is afraid but he tries to keep his composure staying stoic. And as the scene plays out, we realize that Edward Nashton was only talking about the mask of the Batman and the Riddler instead of the persona of Bruce Wayne or the identity of Edward Nashton. The reveal of Riddler believing the two were working together is a work of art between the two actors. Paul Dano being the perfect antagonist to Robert Pattinson's perfect protagonist. Building the suspense and the crescendo of the music brings the frame into a tight knit box just waiting to explode, literally. While Ave Maria is sang by Riddler and Batman is trying to pierce the glass and his voice becoming muffled by the loud rage and space between the glass, his eyes are ready to strike at the man he can't touch just a few feet away. Another fun fact being that Riddler and Batman never touch gloves during the entire film, which is genius. A quote from Pattinson that really drives home his version of the Batman is this. I look first at the character and what I have to do with it. How I'm going to have to invent nuances in the shell, making it more complex, more complex all the time. Batman is a role in which I have to learn how to play ambiguity better. It's out of the question to interpret a character of a single color. It's beautiful. People who seem to live in two states at the same time. To wrap things up, I believe that Robert Pattinson redefined what it means to be Batman, showing the struggles of a coping man dealing with the loss of his parents and being forced to recognize their imperfections and the real cancer of Gotham's illness, the Wayne Foundation, tackling corruption, blackmail, and the power vacuum left after the Riddler case. Instead of running away with Selina, one of the few people who understand Bruce, choosing to stay behind and fight for the hope of the city, for the idea that one day, maybe not for a long time, but one day, Gotham will be okay. And it can be better. That he can be better. Growing beyond vengeance, becoming the knight, becoming 